Make it dearly, ladies and gentlemen. That was not for at all. Hello. My name is Tony. As you say, I'm recently married. Sorry, ladies. It's a little piece of dialogue from my life. Hey, baby, did you see our downstairs neighbor? He totally wrecked his car and broke his leg in like four places. Her. Good. Maybe now he'll quit blocking me in. My wife is a social worker, ladies and gentlemen. It's true, it is. And you know, I mean, it's wonderful, and she's like totally compassionate about people and everything, but like five o'clock on Friday, it's like, fuck you, humanity. God, I love her so much. I mean, she does such a like an awesome job, you know? She cares for disadvantaged people and at-risk populations, and that like totally inspired me and shit. That's why I got a job at a strip club. So I got a job at a strip club, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And when I got it, my wife was like completely unfazed. She didn't give a shit. And I was like, baby, aren't you worried that I might sleep with one of the strippers? She just laughed in my face. <laughs> like, no, no, not really. No. So I'm working in the strip club, and one of the girls comes up to me. She's like solid ebony black in this little white bikini, and it's like gorgeous. And she comes up to me, and she's like, hey there. How you doing? My name is Lexi. I say, hey, Lexi's the name of my dog. <laughs> she was abused as a puppy, and now she pees on the floor and has to sleep in the closet. But I bet you can relate to that, right? She didn't laugh, actually, though. The manager came up to me and was like, don't talk to the girls anymore, Johnny. Like, don't tell them. That was a good, I mean, it wasn't just a strip club. I demean it by saying that. It was truly a sexual entertainment complex. It had a, a full dildo boutique. It had everything. It had a video arcade, even. Well, they called it a video arcade. I called it a string of jerk-off booths. Oh man, and sometimes some of the younger dudes would come up to me like, oh wow, you guys got a video arcade? Like, no, not what you think, sonny boy. No tech in waiting for you. No time crisis. Just another kind of crisis where you walk in on a creepy homeless dude jerking into 80s porn. A fresh crisis for you. It was creepy working there, but it wasn't all bad. I kind of liked working at the strip club. They had its perks. Um, amateur night, for example, was pretty awesome. I loved amateur night. You don't understand. It's like women compete for the opportunity to win $100. It's like American Idol on meth. Um, first of all, fat girls falling down is never not funny. Um, <laughs> slipping on their own little flop sweat, it's good. It's always funny. Sometimes the girls aren't the smartest girls in the thing and they make them fill out the little forms where it's like so the greasy, greasy MC can read about them while they're prancing around on stage. And I, you know, say things like, the Misty's turn-ons include clitoral stimulation and cash money, uh, that kind of stuff. But I remember one time and specifically, the girl was on stage, her name was Jasmine, and the DJ was like, and it says here that Jasmine's sexual fantasy is that she one day wants to do an ogre. I was like, what was that? She wants to do an ogre, he says? Some fucking World of Warcraft, that's pretty sexy, and I fucking freaked out, Dungeons and Dragons. I will be your lord of the cop ring, that's fine with me. But it turns out she didn't say that she wanted to do an ogre. She had just misspelled the word orgy. <laughs> I quit that job soon after. Um, so I'm going to tell you about a weird dream I had. Um, oh, God. So yeah, it's me, and I'm standing in my bedroom wearing a hairnet and scouring a big pot with a Brillo pad and sitting in the middle of the room staring at me as this little penguin. And this penguin's look, looking at me. And he's doing this little dance. And he's making this noise. He's going, oh, 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 oh. And I'm just looking at him. And I'm like washing this big dish and looking at him and washing it. He's like, oh, just waving his little penguin head. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm just washing this dish. And I'm like, wow, I don't even have any water in this bedroom. Why am I washing the dish right now? I don't even think penguins are indigenous to Chicago. And he's like, oh, I hit that. Oh, oh. Uh, no, this doesn't make any fucking sense at all. What the hell is going on right now? You know, I think I might be asleep. I think I'm dreaming. That's it. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. And I wake up, and my cat is sitting on my chest and looking into my face and going, oh, 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 My cat was going to vomit on my face.
face, ladies and gentlemen. God, he's such a fucking asshole. Like a deadbeat roommate who doesn't pay any rent. Fuck him. I'll tell you, you know the thing with the animal and they have the food item and you and they want the food item and you have it and they're like, no, I can't have anything. They're like, no, you can't have the thing. It's to this point with my cat. I've got the glass of milk. It's sitting on the table. He'll like walk up to it and look me in the eye as he takes his little fist and just jams it in the milk and then turns around and walks away. Like, like he's telling me like, oh, what's that? I don't get any milk? How about nobody gets any milk, motherfucker? What you think about that? And I can clean my little milky paw prints as I walk away. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Barber.